Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam question that deals with debt restructuring. Debt restructuring is covered on the CPA exam as well as your intermediate accounting. So it's a topic that you need to be familiar with. It's not an easy topic, but also it's not that difficult. And debt restructuring became an issue during 2007, 2008, when the financial crisis hits and everybody wanted to teach this topic again, debt restructuring. So I'm gonna go ahead and work the CPA question that's gonna illustrate the concept of this debt restructuring. It's part of lending. It's part of lending money. Basically, lending money is making an investment. And sometimes you make an investment and as a result, the person that you gave the money to cannot pay you back for economic reasons or for whatever reason it is, then you have to maybe work a deal with them. And that's what debt restructuring is all about. As I said, this topic is covered on the CPA exam. And if you are a CPA candidate, please take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I can do that, but I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can explain the topics differently. As you will see in this video, I'll go over the questions a little bit more in details. And I do have this debt restructuring covered on my website and much in detail plus examples. So I don't spend five to 10 minutes on this topic. Maybe I spent 45, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes on the topic when your CPA review course spent 10 minutes. So the difference is I go a little bit more in depth. And the reason is, is because I teach you the material as if you never looked at it before. On the contrary, the CPA review course, they assume you already know it and they're just reviewing it with you. There's a good chance your professor did not even cover debt restructuring in college. So when your CPA review course start to give you those mnemonics, you'll be like, I have no clue what they're talking about. And that's understandably so. They're assuming one thing and it may not apply to you. So I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam Take a look at my website. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your return is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. As I said, this topic is also covered in intermediate accounting. I do have an intermediate accounting course along other courses as well. Check out my website. Please connect with me with me on LinkedIn and take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation students that use my system to pass the exam. Like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, let's take a look at this exercise to illustrate the concept. On January 1st, year one, Adam Corp lent Farhat $200,000 with 10% simple interest note payable in 10 years. Well, since there's a lot of figures, let's see what the question is first. As a result of this debt restructuring, Adam should record what? So I know it's a debt restructuring. And because it's debt restructuring, when you do a debt restructuring, what's gonna happen is, you're going to have it because you have a receivable, you're going to have a bad debt expense and evaluation account. So when you do a debt restructuring, you're going to lose, although it's a loss. But since it's a receivable, we're going to call it bad debt expense and valuation allowance. Therefore, immediately what I can do before I can, I can I even read anything else, I'm down to 50 50. My answer is either C or D. And if you're on the exam, guess what? Take your take your chance if you don't understand what's going on, but don't choose the loss as an answer. Okay, so simply put, so for, in this example, I'm gonna be assuming I am Adam. So I'm Adam, so always I say, I'm Adam, this is what I'm gonna be doing. Although the other party is Farhat Inc. So Adam lent Farhat 200,000 with a 10% simple interest rate notes payable in 10 years. Pretty straightforward. Interest on the note is, pay, is payable annually, a typical loan, and the principal is due at the end of the term. Very, very straightforward deal. As, it, as, it, as of January 1st, year three, due to economic difficulties, Farhat has yet to pay any interest. So Farhat is not paying his interest. Farhat approached Adam for possible reneg re renegotiating the terms. So Farhat says, look, I, I cannot pay the 10%. Um, let's work some, some deal so we can, we can, uh, we can save this. We can, I can at least pay you rather than just take, you, you're taking the full write off. Okay, Adam agrees, I agrees. Adam forgave the interest on the note accrued to date and reduced the interest payment to 8%. So I said, okay, I will agree to, uh, to, do, some, to do some renegotiation. I'm going to forgive all the interest that was accrued up to this point. And the future interest payment, rather than 10%, it's going to be 8%. So let's try to translate this into numbers. First, the original deal is 200,000 times 10%. Farhat is supposed to pay me $20,000 for year one 
and another $20,000 for year two. So what happened is Farhat owes me $40,000. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to forgive this. I'm going to tell, I told, I told Farhat, don't worry about the $40,000. we are going to start fresh. Okay. So what happened is this. Simply put, I have an old note. An old note in a sense that I lent Farhat $200,000. I have a notes receivable. And I have $40,000 of interest, pay, interest receivable as well. So as of today, before any renegotiation happening, I have 240,000 on my books in terms of asset when it comes to this loan. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to renegotiate everything and as a result, I'm gonna lose. Of course I'm gonna lose because I'm for, for one thing, I'm losing this 40,000, okay? And I'm gonna have to reduce my interest. So I'm gonna be losing, but what's the loss? Well, the loss is how much is my new note Okay, what's my new notes receivable versus this 240,000? What does that mean? Well, here's what does that mean. I agree for eight year term. So uh, not agreed, what le what's left is eight years. So we kept that the same one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So here's the new deal. Uh, the loan now is eight years. So I have a new note, eight years. In eight years, you have to pay me 200,000 okay and also over the eight years you're gonna have to pay me two hundred thousand times eight percent which is sixteen thousand okay so the payment are so you have to pay me every year now rather than 20 you're gonna pay me sixteen thousand so this is what the problem is now this is the new note so what's the present value of this note receivable i find the present value then i compare the present value to what I have on my books now, I have on my books 240000 that once I renegotiate this deal, I have to take it out and replace it with the new note. The difference between the present value of the new note and what I had on the books, 240000 it's either it's going to be 64480 or 61240 How do I do this? Well, I have to find the present value. So I'm going to start with 200000 It's eight years, so you can take out this 10-year. You don't have to worry about this 10-year here. The 200,000, I'm gonna be receiving it only once. So I'm gonna be using the present value of a dollar. And by the way, here, here why also that restructuring is challenging or difficult for some students, it's because they may not be familiar with the time value of money. Now I'll tell you something. When I, if you subscribe to my resources, for example, if you have Becker, remember Becker have like F1 module one, F1 module two. If you if you are a subscriber to Roger, Roger has FAR one. If you subscribe to Glime, Glime has, you know, they start with unit one. Guess what? I have F0, I have FAR zero, and I have unit zero. And when students first subscribe to my so subscribe to my service, they would say, we don't have those F zeros, FAR zeros, and unit zeros. Well, before I start even teaching you F1, FAR1, or Unit 1, you have to understand the time value of money, and you have to understand your basic accounting. So I have two, two units that are considered zero, F0 and FAR0 and Unit 0. So before you start F1, before you start FAR1, before you start Unit 1, I want to make sure you have strong understanding of the time value of money and strong understanding of your basic accounting journal entries, uh, adjustments, financial statements, so on and so forth, basic financial statements. So that's why, uh, you know, this is why you have to understand time value of money. Now, here's the other trick here. Do I use 8% or do I use 10%? Well, you as an investor, you means me, Adam, as an investor, what I did is I lend my money. I, I want to earn 10%. I still want to earn 10%. I'm losing now, but when I discount my payment, when I discount my principal, I still have to use 10%. Therefore, I'm going to be multiplying this by 0.467, and that's going to give me 93,400. So this is the present value of the 200,000. Now I have to find the present value of the 16,000. It's an annuity. So I'm dealing with this table here. It's an annuity. And again, what do I use? Do I use the eight or do I use the 10? No, to discount, I use the 10. Why? Because, uh, because I want to earn 10%. Although I am not earning 10%, I lost, but I have to discount using 10%. Although my payment, the cash I'll be receiving is 8%. I cannot, you know, I'm receiving 8% cash. I use the 8%, but I will discount the payment under the assumption as if I'm receiving, I'm discounted at 10%. I'm at a loss. I know I'm at a loss. 
because that's the whole deal is I went into this renegotiating knowing I'm gonna take I'm gonna have to write down my loan therefore if I take 16,000 times 0.5335 it's gonna give me 85,000 three 60 let me just do do the calculation real quick we need a calculator here so so I'm gonna take 16,000 my payment and I'm gonna multiply it by 5.335 which is the present value which is 85,360 85,360 now all what I have to do is take 85,360 plus 93,400 and this is my new note my new note is worth 178,760 so those two together will give me the present value of my note which is this is my new asset that's fine now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my new asset and compare my new asset to my old asset to what I to what I have to kind of remove from the books minus 240,000 and voila I have a valuation allowance of 61,240 therefore the answer is D notice what I told you at the beginning if you want to guess choose choose between C and D because C and D are uh, part of the entry will be bad that expense but it will be for 61 to 40 okay if if we do the entry we're not going to do the entry but if we do the entry that's what would happen uh, and this is what would happen that's why I told you you can basically immediately take this question down to 50 50 which is good 50 50 is better than 20 if you're going to take your chances I'm sure you'll prefer to take your chance as 50 50. you know what let's do the journal entry so what would the journal entry looks like let me just I'm gonna erase this erase this hopefully although I'm gonna erase in it you guys get the concept let's look at the journal entry maybe it will it will uh, it will make sense it hopefully it will create you know some it will clarify some confusion so the first thing I have to do in the journal entry is to remove my old note therefore I have a note receivable of 200,000 I am removing I have to remove remember in addition to the note remember I told you I have to get rid of the note I also have to get rid of my accrued interest so also I have another asset called accrued interest receivable that's 40,000 so this is the credit column and this is the debit column okay so I have to remove the note I have to remove I have to remove the notes receivable this is the original one and I have to re I have to remove the I have to remove the accrued interest this is of the old note now I have to book a bad debt expense in an allowance account therefore I'm gonna debit bad debt expense 61,240 61,240 which is this account here but it's 61,240 and I'm gonna credit evaluation allowance 61,240 okay now obviously this those entries don't, don't balance what I'm missing is the new note the new note again I'm gonna call this new just I'm gonna put it in a different color to call it call it new my new note my new note receivable is 240,000 it has to balance and I'm gonna explain to you you might be saying it's not really 100 it's it's only it should be only 178 whatever it was yes that's going to be 178 so here's what's going to happen on the balance sheet you are going to show a note receivable of 240,000 then minus the allowance of 61,240 so you have to show the allowance and as a result let's do it again here 240 oh, not 2.4 million 240 minus 61,240 and that's going to give us the note will be for 178760 so the note will be that much you would still you would still show the new note at the gross amount that minus the allowance and your loss will be booked at 61240 so we already know you have a loss of 61240 so you took the loss you took you you record the loss and this is what they want you to do so this is the debt restructuring problem once again part of it is understanding there's a lot to understand here you have to understand how notes work you have to understand how time value of money work you have to understand the new restructuring deal so here you have I would say three layers and I would say if you get something like this on the exam 
this is a challenging question it, it's it's a challenging question hopefully you'll get it right okay again at the end of this recording i'm going to invite you again and again to visit my website farhatlectures.com once again i don't replace your cpa review course look if i can tell you don't worry about your cpa review course i can replace it i would love to say this i simply can't do so but what i can do is i can be a useful addition i can explain the material differently helping you add points to pass the exam good luck study hard and subscribe.